So let's call the order at uh, 637. We have a discussion with Steve Kroll. Steve is the uh, chair of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals <coughs> slash Sugarbush for the last 13 years. Sugarbush is in the process of uh, starting to uh, do some work because the Supreme Judicial Court of the State of Massachusetts has decided that it can. So we've had a few people that have been calling the select the uh, selectman's office um, with concerns about things that are happening. So we've asked Steve if he could come in and kind of give us fill us in with the best that he knows to date. Stephen. Okay, um, mem members of the board, uh, this is uh, this the Sugar Bowl project has, like you say, been <coughs> ongoing for a long, long time. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, HAC issued their decision with and essentially laid down the uh, conditions for a comprehensive permit to be issued to. Uh, Sugarbush to build their 150 unit uh, apartment complex up in uh, uh, Plum Tree Road. Uh, things have been going along and uh, there was a settlement agree agreement that had a number of conditions that had to be met before building permits and construction could start. Uh, Sugarbush has been uh, busy uh, you know, working on that list, they pretty much have all those conditions met. Uh, the building inspector uh, is close to issuing a partial building permit to uh, commence construction on the foundation and do some structural work. Uh, the building inspector and I think the, uh, uh, the, the town, the conservation commission had given uh, Sugarbush permission to start clearing and starting start some excavation work up there already, uh, and things are things are close to approaching uh, issuing a building permit. There's a uh, the uh, uh, the building inspector had a review of the drawings and the the uh, plans. Uh, done by uh, an independent auditing engineering, sort of a peer review, sort of. Yeah. Uh, and they found a number of things with those drawings that had to be corrected. And uh, I believe that once those those items are corrected, uh, he'll be close to granting a, a, a full building permit to the process. Uh, I understand from the build, from the selectors that uh, there's been some questions about some from residents about what's going on up there and uh, looking for you know, maybe some drawings. And I've, I've got vast, I, I have a vast amount of, of, of documents and I'm, I'm preparing and I've got a list of uh, documents that I think uh, would be appropriate, so, you know, consisting of you know, site plans and uh, you know, parcel plans showing you know, dimensions and what, you know, renderings of what, what's gonna be going on up there. Uh, I can, uh, I, I can present them to, I don't know if I can bring it to Cindy or whatever, and we can get it put up on the website. Uh, really that, would be, that was my, rec that, that would be my recommendation. I think it was a recommendation of the, the building inspector as far as, uh, you know, something for interested residents and to, to see, you know, what's going to be happening. And, uh, but, you know, it is, you know, we've gone through a long process with this. It's sort of, you know, becoming a done deal. So it's just a case of, uh, uh, you know, executing. And uh, I know the building inspector has been on top of them. Uh, it's going to, you know, it's going to proceed with, you know, as much supervision and oversight as we can give them. But, you know, the, the, the wheel is moving. Well, the only thing I know, Steve, is that in January or December this past year, the uh, project uh, it's quoted as saying that in the uh, Daily Hampshire Gazette that 
the project was going to happen, was in the process of hap happening, and that the developer is well aware that communication was an integral part to building a complex, that they uh, were going to be in contact with the neighbors, they're going to uh, put together a, a newsletter, send it out um, on a regular basis. And I can tell you from firsthand experience that like most of this project, that has not happened. The developer has not reached out to the neighbors, hasn't informed the neighbors what's going on, hasn't, uh, hasn't publicly stated a nice thing in the newspaper. It would have been very reassuring to the, to the residents, but he has not, they have not done that. I don't, I would say that it, that characteristic has been, in my view, um, uh, talk is cheap and actions speak words, or actions speak volumes. So inaction or saying of, that you're going to do certain things and not, we, we were told all the way, I can go back 13 years ago. I'll go back 13 years ago. And I was told that this would not be student housing. This is not student housing. This is a need, a, a, the need in the community. Guess what we got today? We got a letter from the Mass Housing. Our state is financing that project to the tune of $27 million. And in here it talks about, now I got a question. How many low mod housing units could be developed for $27 million? Putting together homes for first home, first time home buyers. That's not what this is. And if this, this letter should be written, be posted and think, it talks about student housing. And they're going to be rent. It's going to be beds are going to be rented, not apartments, but beds are going to be rented. Uh, Mr. Chair, we are putting that on the website too, right? That letter, I hope, with uh, other documents. How, how? And and this is and 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 <clears throat> we were told by the project development team that these were not student housing. It was affordable housing. Okay, so for twenty-seven million dollars. They're going to get 25% of 150 units for affordable housing. So our state is subsidizing a for-profit building. This this is terrible. And 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 there's there were a select board from the town of Amherst told us at our at our 300th parade that we were crazy fighting it. Well. I, I just, I'd love to see people to see this and, and the people to be outraged, because I am. When, when we're, our state is putting 27, this, and, 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 our, and, and the governor, the lieutenant governor has their name on this. They should be proud. And we have housing, we have a housing short in, the, in this commonwealth for people that, that can't afford affordable housing. And this is the way we're going to do it. That we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna give $27 million so they can build student housing. <clears throat> it, it, it's a travesty. I mean, you're, you're, you are saying, sir, uh, which I what I feel like, except you've phrased it a lot more. Passionately, Steve? <laughs> I wouldn't say passionately. I, I, I'm you, sorry. You, you uh, couched exactly. it nicely. I, I think you, uh, uh, you know, point well taken, but uh, uh, you know, I was up as upset when I saw that letter. Uh, I forwarded it, as you know, to, uh, to Jay Tollerman, and I and, said, and look at this. Yeah. And uh, he is currently going to the the attorney that he helped that helped draw up the you know the settlement agreement right. mm. uh, to get some clarification. Or you know, I don't know what we're going to get. 
I mean, hey, and, and and I, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll, if it, I'm gonna interrupt you for one se second, Stephen. I, I just want to commend the zoning board for the job that they've done over the last 13 years. And I've said that we 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 said it as a board. Yeah. We we said it individually. We said it in private. Um, but um, I, I think if not all your members, almost all your members have have been consistent throughout this this ordeal. And 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 again. There was very basic information, and and to tell you the truth, we, we still have. If, if someone asked me today for a final plan for that facility, there's not one. On, there's not one in record. Well, we've received plans. I mean, they they have they have submitted plans. The building inspector has them, uh, and they're uh, being reviewed now. Uh, they have been reviewed, and they need to be. Before he gets the building, uh, be, before he gets the building permit, he's got to, you know, he's got to change the uh, deficiencies that were found when they reviewed the drawings. I mean, this you're, you're absolutely correct that, uh, you know, Sugarbush and all its different entities that have been before us, mm -hmm. uh, you know, has has not been forthcoming with information. Uh, in, they, they've they've withheld it, uh, probably intentionally. But uh, they've been very slow with inf information, and like you say, they uh, uh, made promises and have not kept them. But I, I, I again, I just want to thank. You. Why I'm going here is that I want to thank your board, and I've said this to you before, for all the hard work that you put into it, and and to try to and and, you, and the, the entire process, you kept your personal beliefs out out of the the hearings. Um, and you stuck to the facts, um, and, and you're, we're very, very lucky to have uh, a zoning board and associate zoning board members that done the hard work that you guys done. Thank you. But I also, like right now, the whole project is in code review right now. Personally, my thought is I, I'd like to thank the building inspector plumbing inspector, the fire chief, and everybody that's involved because I think that there was a thought that Sunderland's a small hick town and that they would just throw things out there and and we just roll over. But those guys that, that are in those positions have, have done their job and now it's in a code review um, because they did not provide everything to specifications. So it's in code review right now, and I think it's because we have quality people in those positions that are, are that are hopefully going to back up what you guys put down on paper. So I'm, I, I want the people of the town of Sunderland to realize that that we're very fortunate to have quality people, fire fire chief, the uh, zoning enforcement, building building commissioner. That, that, that they the they are doing a wonderful job. Building inspector has been very very diligent and I've been working closely with him you know for a long time and he's he's got a uh, you know a good project manager for lack of better words that's that's being that's being hired by the uh, developers uh, expense yep to you know first of all he he they're the ones that are doing that code review and they found the deficiencies mm. uh, and they will be uh, you know on site you know, watching the development of this as it goes forward. <coughs> so, I mean, Joe's done a good, very good job. So, I mean, we've done everything we can. Uh, and, I mean, this is, uh, th that letter is just acid in the wound. Uh, I mean, I couldn't believe it when I read that. And, first of all, the number made me mm -hmm. nauseous. And then I even read further to, mm -hmm. and when they talk about uh, being blatant about the student housing. And then, uh, not only will it be offered on a per unit basis, but a per bedroom basis. I mean, kind of, kind of flies in the face of 13 years of sales pitch, doesn't it? Mm. It does a little bit. I mean, <clears throat> I think we recognize what this was right from the beginning, uh, and you know, no amount of uh, putting lipstick on it has changed it by the the. It's so a good I mean, analogy. There's still a pig under there. Well, right that's now. insulting to pigs, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs>
I would use another animal. Maybe, yeah. But, uh, it, it it's unfortunate. I uh, and you know like like I say, this was just acid in the wound. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just, in, in my opinion, mass housing should be ashamed of themselves. I I, I don't, you know, it, it to commit twenty seven million dollars for. 25 30 apartments what whatever it is it's it's a it's it's mm -hmm. it's a joke whatever whatever the 25 percent number is um that that type of money you look at all the good that could have done with that money for a lot of people mm -hmm. and and even their 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 affordable their affordable price mm -hmm. is is sure. is not it it you're talking you're talking considerable amount of money you're yeah. you're not it's it's not their affordable units are incredibly expensive compared to the uh uh you know the, the rental housing stock that's available in the town market rate yeah right and i think we have into outside outside of the the pain and the acid inside the wound it adds 9.1 percent it's not in that document but one of the many others 9.1 percent total impact uh increase in our housing stock all of one type so it's nothing that we haven't been saying for a long long time or defending the town's position uh if i could mr chair not just the zba but also town meeting over a series of votes appropriated money mm -hmm. to stand on principle right not in support of the board of selectmen or the zba but to stand on principle so i mean when you take a you know you take a step back and look at this is what the intent of chapter 40b was ding 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 uh, i, I mean you know uh, you know trying to stimulate affordable housing and direct develop affordable housing is a very worthy goal but this law is like in how it's sure. being applied and sure. used and abused and, and to me <clears throat> is I'm hoping that this letter <clears throat> and this situation gets out there and gets a wider audience. And I think this would make a nice um, well, in, in context, too, tip of I, the spear. Yeah. If if I could, Dave, as mm -hmm. well as Mr. Chair, the, the the reality is this isn't the same developer. This isn't the same holding company. It's this is this, this is this project has gone nearly a bankrupt once, bought by the town of Amherst and Sunderland once, and as well as Water District and moved to Connecticut and that company sold it and this is private company in Texas now with deeper yeah. pockets and they still ended up getting a loan from the Commonwealth. And I, I don't know if you gentlemen remember, but I don't know about <clears throat> three to five years ago, they actually had a referendum on mm -hmm. Chapter 40. They sure did. Yes. I got and when I looked at the state little pamphlet, they always send yeah. these lovely yeah. little voting pamphlets yep. uh, you know here's your great point here's your uh do you support a letter and you look at the you look at the description <laughs> yep i wanted to vote for it this sounds sure. great that's great exactly what, uh, and, and that's what it produced yeah well yeah so but. so bear in mind that our tax dollars through bonding are going to underwrite a private <laughs> equity firm in texas which is putting yep. up student housing where as the last two paragraphs read, while all units will be available and marketed to the general public, the property's proximity to UMass and planned amenities make it a good housing option for some of the university's 30,000 students. To accommodate the individual needs of the potential students and also appeal to the overall rental population, the market units will be offered both on a per unit and per bed basis. That is from the Mass Housing Authority. Well, the next paragraph, I mean, it's interesting. It still talks sure, about student it housing. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. Fountain Residential, i.e. the parent company, uses this, quote, student plus, unquote, apartment model and other developments that they have built near universities and operate throughout the country. The student apartment model has been used nationally for many years and has grown as demand for modern housing close to large university campuses has been strong due to rising college enrollment, among other factors. I hope this information has been helpful for you. Mm. Yes, it has been. Yep. It, yeah, I mean, it's just... It's just remember, the truth in print. <laughs> well, exactly. And it's relative <laughs> to providing funding <clears throat> for a, quote, affordable housing, and they finish up with those last two paragraphs. Mm -hmm. It's and like, did they even look at that letter before they, you know... It's sort of a confirmation letter for us. 
Yeah, well, that's a really good point. You know, it's like that, and like you said, well, there it is in writing. And the there's only one reason why it's being done on a per bed basis from an economic standpoint and a business standpoint. Right. So, but I mean, yes, if it, if, mm. what's so what's the threshold for that uh, um, to qualify for? Eighty percent of the medium income of the income. last census. Of the last census. Yeah, the median so household income. They so have to, they have, say they're going to have housing so that's going to be. You, you could have like, I, I, it was okay. like 50000 51, You If you're a single person, like $51,000. To qualify, right. And if they, or, or the, and if they're 80% considered affordable to that income level, then you'd be it able to. Right. Yeah, but then, but then ask what, what, what's, what's the, uh, You'd have to ask, what is the rental rate? Right. Well, that of course that's right. that would be the. <laughs> so it was. It, it's been. It's been argued as we're on the 40B and we're getting deeper and deeper in the weeds with respect to Sugarbush Meadows. There is no market rate. Current market rate. Of vacancies in Sunderland, that are more expensive than this project, which we are subsidizing. And that's with a vacancy rate of seven between seven and nine percent currently in the market rate. What are they planning to charge for a one? It's over a thousand bucks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the business, the business economic. The, there's there is a whole model yeah. associated with the application, and there is an economic. What are they, it's not economics. What's the name of they call it? The category in the busy marketing. Uh, a marketing plan. Yeah, the marketing. Plan. I mean, it, in the marketing like they, plan, they vary like from. I, th I remember numbers like twelve hundred dollars a month. Right. right. It's like that's considered affordable, but they're going to be nice apartments with modern appliances. Ten foot they, ceilings. They're newer. Ten foot ceilings. Granite crown tops. And the best part about that is you can you can dilute that by selling it by beds now instead of mm -hmm. bedrooms. Anyway. Anyway. So. Um, so to the question, if I could, Mr. Chair, the inquiries to the town have been: What's it look like? Right. So we're going to put it up. We're, we'll have it put up on the, on the uh, website. On the website. Yeah, Probably so the I'll general think. arrangement of the buildings would be helpful. Yeah, mm. I, I think you know the the site plans that that Joe recommended. I think would give a, a good overview. Pretty good context. Idea. Show some elevations. It'll show you know dimensionally what they're planning to do and landscaping where lights are going to be and the driveway is going to be. And, uh, no, I, I would go to Cindy with that. I could. Yeah, we'll put them yeah. up on the website. Do you have electronic files or? Yeah, I got these in electronic file format. They're just large. Yeah. So in in the in the event people are watching, five three story garden style residential buildings, fifty units apiece. Garden style. Thirty. Is it thirty? Thirty. Five times piece. thirty. Five. Yeah, yeah. I was just giving him more money. <laughs> what, what is that? Garden style. Garden style. Is that like it has Gangnam trees. Style? Has trees. Three, did you say three story? Yeah. Three stories. Yeah. Okay. Stevie, thank you. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, you know any good shrinks? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm sure we're in trouble right now. That's all right. No, I forgot one board it's we okay. forgot too was the con company. It's okay. They were uh, trooping through the, the muck and mire years ago on that. Yeah, they problem. don't want you to speak to, they don't want you to. Very powerful people don't want you to see letters like this in public. Right. I, don't, I don't think. It's a great story, actually. If I could, Mr. Chair, indulge the, the camera. Oh, I don't know, 10 years ago at an MMA conference, we went up, tucked our name badges in our jacket, <laughs> went like this, and so went up to the DHCD in Mass <coughs> Housing and said, so if we want to put the 150 units in a town and we'd want to go and get bonding, how would we do that? So they talked about the mechanics of it. Then we went across to Mass Housing, and the Mass Housing people said, well, if you're like 23.5, the best thing to do is to get over 25, because then we can skip the middleman and just go to a larger loaner, a larger lender. And we zipped our thing down, and we were like, that's good to know. Thanks so much. Scott Bergeron, Town of Sunderland. Those people just approved this project. We'll see you in court. <laughs> With a witness, by the way, who's no longer a selectman. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Anyway, thanks for all you did. I hope that was therapeutic.
No, it wasn't actually. It's, it's, it's more. It's more just like light on the problem. Where's the uh, Fountain Residential Center in Texas? Sorry, what's that? Do you know what town they're centered in in Texas? I have no idea about the parent company at this point. The parent company has been more than amorphous through multiple sales. Probably, probably the third district where they do all of the um, copyright, uh, uh, patent troll stuff. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if that's the same district. Okay, next up. Um, approve the minutes of uh, March 18th. Motion. All second. Motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of March 18th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Sherry. Uh, old business, anything from the select board? Under updates, we have a capital planning committee meeting tomorrow, Mr. Chair, and uh, our frontier negotiations meeting uh, was deferred from last Thursday to the coming Monday, April 1st, which means I may well be late to this meeting as that starts at 4.30 and goes 90 minutes with one group and 90 minutes with the second group. David, anything? Uh, we got a personnel committee meeting tomorrow night. We had uh, we didn't have quorum for a ditch committee meeting last night, so we're going to try to get the special guest uh, star appearance from George and schedule our next one. Um, and then Thursday I have a only a strategy session for Union 38. Um, we canceled our meeting with the union, um, and we're only holding a strategy session. Yeah. Thank you, Davey. Similar information, I think, around healthcare was was held up by the by the negotiating groups. Yeah. Yep. Anything else? Sherry, anything? I have nothing. No. Oh, okay. So, we're going to start talking about budgets and revenues and all that kind of good stuff. We finally got the uh, school, elementary school, voted their budget on. Tuesday of last week. So we, we got a copy to that. Um, the elementary school budget. And we got some uh, comments came in. <coughs> we go through everything. Elementary schools up $353,353. So that's a 14%, the budget that was voted was a 14% increase. Just quick numbers, uh, the town <coughs> has the ability to raise through Prop 2.5 and new growth about $200,000 a, a year. And we, we have those exact numbers in this page here. We'll discuss that shortly. But uh, the 354,000, <coughs> the 353,000, $353, um, would, we're going to have to figure out how to make that happen if it's, if we can make it happen. So, Mr. Bergeron, what do you think? Mr. Chair, if I could, the, the all needs request in front of us is for a town growth of $351,000. Uh, the elementary school ask is, actually I shouldn't say that, let me go back. Expense request growth, 572,788. And using our revenue sheet in front of us, if you take the 572, 788, and you remove the three, 351 and change, 350, excuse me, 354 and change. 354, 11, four. Yeah, 114. Um, obviously, it, it equates to the, one of the largest largest single piece of growth. There's no no denying that. Because throughout the budget, you, you remove debt, you, you retire certain things, you have revenue pieces, that, that piece is dynamic. 
um, with a $351,210 gap, as we currently know, uh, in the revenue sheet. That is the assessment side uh, from the state. That is the estimated receipt side. That is the raise and appropriate side. Uh, we have no way of closing that gap with a piece of one-time revenue. We just don't. And the risk, of course, in closing a gap like that with a one-time revenue is even if we applied an additional $250,000, $300,000, or $200,000 and cut $150,000 from the remaining uh, requests, uh, those revenues aren't guaranteed forward. And I raised that. I wanted to bring this. I very rarely bring this thing. Um, this past year, we had a free cash certification of 534 the prior year, and Doug, you'll appreciate this because it's kind of like choice incoming, right? We we had the prior year, 757, but we could account for that. We knew why that happened. That was capital that was unspent. In 15, it was 424. And in 14, it was 347. These are free cash numbers to the town. We talked about what's the new normal with free cash. In 13, it was 397. Elliot, these are all on the DLS website. And in 12, it was 333. So we hang out in that band of the mid to high threes. We had a jump which was a bit of an abnormality. We know we could accommodate, we could actually accommodate, we could actually account for about 300,000 of that 700. This year we've got 537. We haven't done a free cash analysis to see what, what's moved in. And I think if we take and have used our three-year average, when we figure revenues, we use a three-year average of free cash use and plug that number in as our placeholder to see if there's anything that's gonna move through, right? So any those abnormalities did everybody run out and buy new cars this year did cadillac have a sale you know did uh did you know we all build new homes uh, but i think if we look at the band between that uh mid threes and low fives that's probably closer i'd like to remove that seven so we're, we're in that four hundred odd thousand dollar range if you looked at the 300 i'm sorry three-year average even with that in our ability of uh, two and a half percent at 90, wait, let me get to the correct year. Our two and a half percent of 92, 27, and um, sorry, 95 and 23. That's where our, our total two and a half comes from without extraordinary uh, revenues coming to the town our projected ability to pay isn't going to support 351 uh, on, in any way, shape, or form. So if the ask is going to be the 350, uh, 354 from the elementary school, the only way to do that is, my opinion, is just two ways to do that. Put a little more of school choice in, reduce that uh, impact of 354 to something we can reach toward, or we simply go to the voters. Right? I don't personally feel funding out of a one-time revenue stream a move toward uh, the town side, which I applaud because it's a recurring expense at the elementary school. Having it land in a single year is something that outside of an override is, is even possible. And again, we have had in a couple of school committee meetings and conversations with school committee members as well as a superintendent, <coughs> we have had this slow creep of use because of, we've had this slow creep of use of school choice that's gone spread across, sprinkled across the operating <coughs> budget. To, to, to move it strategically to something that's recurring has to have as much thought, I feel, as how we got to the point where we're at. So how do we solve the problem without making um, villains, persecutors, and rescuers. There, there aren't any, there just aren't, right? How do we do this? We kind of know how we got here, but how do we get this shift of an ask of 354,114, you know, onto a recurring stream? And then, learning from what we've gotten to this point, how do we, what are the red flags you look for in the future to go, mm -hmm. wait a minute, 
we you know we've seen this movie how do how do we avoid it again because i think that's that's the that's the tension in in the discussion and i say tension in problem solving it's not tension personally right that's a very big piece the going forward part right we have excess capacity in 2019 of 0.5% or less than $25,000 total. So the town runs, this is straight from the DLS, the town runs, we have run at, if you go back over a decade, we've slowly run up to the cap of capacity that allows for us to actually a levy. That said, in the current business year, the current model year, we have just north of 25K as an estimate, but that's before any potential mid-year uh, challenges that come from the state on, not unlike what the school has, or anybody in education has, whether they be uh, challenges to the revenue forecast and then 9C cuts. Uh, we see it primarily in the form of pilot money. And it's kind of interesting because pilot money for the town of Sunderland, although the state runs it up globally and says we're actually higher than we were in years past, uh, they do it by percentage. And so it's by assessed value. Our actual gain is less than a little over a decade ago. So Mount Toby, all those places that are pilot payment in lieu of taxes from the state, they're slowly ticked away, tick, 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 and they've been in a steady decline. And again, this is all available at the DLS website. So our override capacity and people who, you know, think that we're spending wildly will be happy to know that we have an override capacity of over $5 million. That said, the reality is the Board of Selectmen have no override capacity. We, we, I think, collectively, working with the department heads, bring forward a responsible budget and ask for a revenue stream that can support it. So to those who say the taxes are what they are, the taxes we know what they are. Mine are being sent out this week. I completely understand that. But we have about $4 million of capacity you could actually ask for if the residents allowed it. And it's an important piece to bear in mind. So again, our excess levy capacity right now, we're at basically 2015 rates. Sorry, that's the, that's the 3,000 foot view. Hmm. Yeah. Just a quick comment on that too. That they, uh, you know, going back through the town budgets, um, again, in terms of what people think, you know, is happening in terms of spending in the town. Yep. Um, you know, if, if just going with a, a two and a half percent per year increase basically cost you know cost of inflation increases on the town budget mm -hmm. from FY09 going and looking projecting that forward, we would be at uh, right about eight million total. Yep, and the school budget would be right about at. Three million total, mm -hmm. which is probably shockingly, what we're looking shockingly at. close, isn't it? Right. <laughs> you so raise, again, raise a great it's point. Not, uh, I think that anybody is in any of the town departments is, is um, looking for some unusual large ass <laughs> into their budgets. Um, you know, this is you raise a great point. Where we all are. Another piece here is that in two thousand excuse me, 10, the average tax bill in Sunderland was $3,507. And in 2019, it's $4,400. So on a purely retail scale, right? Purely, re pretty close. Yep. You look at, so right. property properties run up basically 9.5, tax increases basically 7.8. So again, numbers don't remove necessarily the passion around it, but I think it's important to keep those kinds of numbers in context as we have an, an honest discussion about where you know we're, we're perceived to be. I struggle a little bit with a little bit, and I advocated for if you're going to have an ask, let's just ask once, right? And I did that at the school committee meeting. It's really important to bear in mind. I, I I also believe that at some point, feathering or metering in those kinds of revenues over time. In some ways, it, it, I don't want to use the word deceptive. 
it it becomes it can lull the electorate to sleep to how much things really cost, right? And I think those costs are important. If we have the variability of choice, student population needs that are being described by the committee, which we have no reason to doubt, and the loss of those revenues are, are gonna be falling on the town side, to me the important part is what did, you, what did we collectively learn and how do we watch those in the future? Three hundred fifty thousand dollars is a bigger ask in one year than you know we've ever asked town wide as far as a ballot question goes. So a single department ask of that size has got to have a real backstory. So anyway, you asked, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Can I ask the if I can just ask you again, the 2010 and 2014 average numbers again. 2010 uh, tax single family tax bill. Yes. Uh, 2010 And again, this is all Department of Local uh, Services DLS Gateway, oh, and then 2019 four four five one. And now that that has a sliding that include that's all of it, uh, uh, Elliot, with respect to. Uh, de recurring debt that's being dropped off. That's that's all of it. That's the actual retail tax bill, based on uh, change in valuation of 2010 average single family home 276988, and an average two family home in the current year of 290354. Well, that's over how many years was it? Uh, that is 210 to 219. Okay. It's almost 20 years. 20 years. Um, and it's important to get this information out there before hyperbole and um, fake information, sure. for lack of a better word, gets out there because, you know, <laughs> that's just numbers. So I, I would you say know. maybe, David, if I could, mis and I didn't mm. I mean to interrupt. Yeah, chapter, chapter 70. Where does Chapter 70 money go? Curious. School committee. Come on. Where's it go? Mm. Chapter 70 money? Yeah, where's Chapter yeah, no, 70 money going? quiz tonight. Uh, um, <laughs> you mean, what, how, where does it end up? What account yeah. does it land in? Yeah, what account does it land in? I don't know. Tom, you know. Schools. Right? 90s road, 70s schools. Oh, okay. I thought you meant. No, that's oh, right. Yeah, like that. so, so 2010, the Chapter 70 money received from the Town of Sunderland, received by the Town of Sunderland from the state, was $873,519. $873,519. it's eight six seven two eight eight seven two eight. Hmm, I notice an interesting trend there. Just saying. <laughs> so again, that, that's, that's, well, that, that's unrestricted now. Yeah. And the argument can be made as you look at the, there's a bit of a bell curve with respect to cho choice receiving. And it's interesting to see if you look at all ed, if you do the choice in, choice out, charter, charter in, you know, charter out, lunch, all those things. In 2010, the town of Sunderland got one, one, two, two, Seven six seven, and in two thousand nineteen, the town of Sunderland gets one two zero two seven seven three. That's straight from the state website. And that that amount, I that difference right there is the backstory. I get it. <laughs> right, that's the backstory. But we people, mean, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. We would not be having this conversation. So. Thank you. I've bored you enough with this. I rarely, I dragged this out of the office on occasion, and now I'm going to put it away. If I can interject one more thing. Yeah. So in theory, if over the last 10 years, if people had much been more vocal to their state government to promote the importance sure. of education, sure. these numbers might not be in a bad situation. So Great point. Really good point. On a, and that's on the education side. If I could, one more time, state-owned land. Um, I'm sorry, total general government. Uh, one. Hang on, total general government. Four four five three two nine two thousand ten five two two six one one two thousand nineteen. So you can see where the where the where the pinch is and where the burden continues to fall. 
So total general government, libraries, police, so, I mean, all of it that's not education. And if you look at the... 455 to 522. Yeah, you go from, you go from 45 to 52. You know, and we're not talking about hundreds of thousands, we're talking about tens of thousands. Right. Which is why I brought up that point at the last school committee meeting, Correct. because it's easy to get lost in all of the other stuff and not realize all the levers that come into play in right. this, because there's a lot of moving parts to it. So again, that's, a, that's a, an hour's worth of time at the DES, I'm sorry, at the DLS site. So, so on, on the budget that was presented, how much, and we we get a uh, how, how much how much uh, school choice was being used to offset the budget? Two two six. The goal, if I could, was to finish the year out with two two zero three zero nine. This year. This year. So the using two hundred and twenty thousand three hundred nine thousand two hundred. $20,309 this year in school choice, leaving a balance forward, which is the struggle, as we saw at the school committee meeting. You have a you're, you're basically underwater right now in the current year. You need to get out of water. If you, the first pass was $193,000, and that was going to leave you $7,000 and change. That was it. In this case, they want to drop that, move the money that choice is supporting to the town side increase it from 193 to 354 leave 98203 in choice this is from TMS's today's transcript and the left choice 98203 that was more like 50 like 40 that's I mean, today's slightly below 50 today's document <coughs> from from Judy yes okay um, so maybe there's opportunity there to talk about Getting go to some psychological thresholds of three hundred and fifty thousand, but yeah, that's that's today's document. Nine eight two zero three remaining. I know the goal at the convers the goal leaving the school committee meeting was to leave fifty six ish. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was in the fifty ballpark. And then the last vote was <laughs> to move one more full time teacher or to or to or to preserve opportunity and choice for a future teacher. I'm not sure where that went. I left at that point. We moved the, right, the full time, the kindergarten. 47-ish yeah, moving right. over, which would make sense, 47 in the original 50s, so you're in I the 90s. It was, I guess I, was, I thought it was much closer. No, it was, it was 2000. <clears throat> what we were looking at was the ending balance was gonna be 2000 before yeah. we moved that kindergarten, that right. teacher. And then we moved the teacher so that it was right at around 50. Right. But maybe there's something else that. So again, uh, today's. Because I wonder, because the other thing that came up in that, there was like a, another discovery of like 57 mm -hmm. in income mm -hmm. related school choice that was being deleted. Double counted, essentially. Right. Students so moved on. Taken back out. Right. Right. And it could be that that's, that's part of the inputs and outputs. But again, today's document's got 98203. Okay. So look at that. Yeah. Remaining. So I guess larger discussion for the board, we don't dabble in school, we don't add dabble in ed outside of the budgeting, really. Maybe we should. I, I know. Well, I'm, I'm just being practical. I, I'm, I mean, <laughs> well, That's I, I'm, so 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 basically, the school committee took a vote the other day. We we the other day we had a hundred ninety three thousand dollar increase, in, and now we have a three hundred and fifty three thousand dollar. Well, actually, three hundred fifty four thousand one hundred fourteen dollar increase, and now the t now that that's. So so that's three three hundred fifty four thousand one hundred fourteen dollar increase in the elementary budget. Total increase of the town budget will be five and change, five seventy. So yeah, five what, seventy. What's our question? How, now it's like, well, where are you going to get the money from, selection, select board? Right. Where are you going to get the money from? Select board. We had to change our name, select board. That that'll help, but where, where's the money coming from? <laughs> so just, and, this, and and I I would I would ask I would ask if if the if the if anybody in in the school has ever come to the town and says, "What's our capacity 
to pay. Well, right. we know that, Tom. I know. The, I, see, unfortunately, I know the answer. Yeah. The, and, 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 and that's a problem. So, right. But, you, I mean, that, I need to stop. Anyway. We're here, and we're here with that number. We, A, we think it's the right thing to do. And, um, uh, you know, and the right thing to bring to the town. And we did have the discussion with the finance committee and everything that, that with all of you to, 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 and said, like, let's, what would it take to try to, um, you know, stop patching this together, do what you think is right and, and give us, you know, let us see that number. That's, uh, that's, you know, that's what we've done. That in the 193 was never voted on by the school committee. It was, right. no, it was, it was, it was a, that, right. presented. Then there was a, a preliminary discovery number. of another Fifty-seven thousand dollar, uh, you know, and and the, right. and the kindergarten teacher was still in the school choice budget. And so. To Doug's to Doug's uh, point, the one ninety three was a placeholder that was sent to the town as we needed something to plug in. Yeah. Right. right, totally get it. You got one hand up. Yes, sir. From my perspective, it this was the most <clears throat> honest budget that we could bring forward. Not one that I wanted to at all. We know exactly what the town's ability to pay is, but I feel like this is I feel like this is the kick the can down the road moment. Because ever since I've been on this board, it's been looking at that school choice saying we can't sustain this. And at some time we have to in my mind it's it's been two parts. It's at some point the town we're gonna have to make some sort of big investment in order to, to write the school choice numbers. And then the second part is proper stewardship to make sure it doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. And I and I I think I, what I've heard from the board a lot of times is um, having no expenditures without the revenue behind it. And what our decision was was to move all the, the teacher salaries off of school choice, that those were recurring expenditures right. based on variable revenue. We can't do that anymore. So that was the decision to get all the school regular teachers off. Going forward, I mean, I've heard from the finance board about having a more regular set of two teachers per grade level, just something more standard that, that, that can take be relied up. on going forward rather than moving people all around all the time. And I don't know how, what we can do with that is, but I just feel like this was the most responsible, honest budget. Scott, you mentioned honest, honest budgeting yep. a couple of times. We've gotten through this by trying to keep things low, using school choice, covering, 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 and it's not there anymore. I'd, and I look at this as three parts. There's about $100,000 each is there's the accounting error with school choice from last year. The second part is the contractual obligations. And then the third part is trying to move everything off of school choice onto the, the general budget. So that, that's how that breaks down for me. I mean, I think if, if that accounting error didn't come up, we might have like skirted by again this year, mm -hmm. but and then we'd be looking at it again next year. Sure. So like for, for me, this is the, you know, we've been kicking the can down the road, we've got to figure out, and I don't know where the money comes from at this point, but this is, Everyone said, how long are you going to kick the can? How long? Like, this is that moment for me. Sure. That's uh, well put. If I could, Mr. Chair. Sure. Sure, so uh, with respect to um, the, the um, and you use the term accounting error, and I think in the, in the, at the school committee meeting and talking with the superintendent, TMS folks, school committee folks, I don't know if I want to apply error to it, but you know, you have, you have the, correct me if I'm wrong, you have the, the maturation of a particular population moving out of a given program, right? So we, we know that that program, that those uh, both choice in and sped offsets travel. They're going somewhere else. My question is, th is um, theoretical. That program continues to exist or those services, I'm gonna call it services maybe instead of a program. It's still K through six ed, right? Those services continue to exist, but if there is not an, if there is not an appropriate uh, student or student population to apply that service, how do those services get sunset, right? At some point, do programs at some point, how does a cost sunset, right? Right. So you're going to have you're going to have some measure of population that's going to leave, 
right? Those, those red revenues are going to leave, but the infrastructure, human and otherwise, and the otherwise we get, we own the building collectively as a town, that, that doesn't change much. But the population of the support services for that, that um, need base are resident. Well, what happens if there's no need? So I'm, I think there's a, um, you know, there still is need within the school. And not, I think no, nothing that's going to bring, I think, like, you know, the maybe no, and if I could, maybe no need was the wrong term, right. but adjusting the need. But adjusting the yes. need. And, I, and, and, um, and Ben is doing that. Yeah. Uh, you know, adjusting, you know, the level of services mm -hmm. to the need. And there are some reductions actually that were made, okay. you know, in response to that. Yeah. So um, again, the, the Board of Selectmen historically hasn't been involved in any of that. And yeah. frankly, I like that, that kind of relationship. That's why we hire people and that's why we elect people. That's why people are elected. But there, there, there's a steady trajectory and this year will be a step change and the trajectory will continue on and on and on. I, I, I'd like to just reinforce that question for future discussion. Maybe it's the red flag piece. You know, how does something get started? How does it, how is it assessed? <coughs> and if it needs to be sunsetted, how, how does that sunset discussion occur? And, and, you know, part of the reason, you know, that the, the program, some of the programs, like, in a, in a, if you're referring yeah. to the Horizons program, yeah, it was. you know, uh, started is because there was such a high degree of variability mm -hmm. and unpredictability uh, budget-wise for us sure. when we were tuitioning out. Out, right, the out-of-district costs, I remember. Yep. It would hit us massively in a year. And so there was, there was a twofold reason for this program. It's A, you know, we want to keep the kids in town mm -hmm. um, and have them, you know, go to school with their town mates. Yep. Um, and B, financially for us, it takes out the, yeah. you know, Right. Those big, uh, right. some of the big swings and, and, and valleys, and and something more stable and that is still adaptable to the need, yep. which is exactly you know what Ben is doing is 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 adjusting the um, amount of you know hiring you know, services that yep. for, for, for <coughs> so, so so the staff the staffing is the staffing is is appropriate to the the to aggregate the, population and the aggregate needs. Correct. Okay. Thank you. But again, a question I won't let go of moving forward. How does something get sunset if it really needs to be sunsetted? Yeah, I think that's a yeah. It's a larger district vision in that as well. Exactly. No, that's a great point. It may not necessarily be one school, but yep. there's probably the need of one of the four schools. Great point. Great Are they point. all within the union? All the schools that the need is based on? Just out of curiosity, because in in this, at least for me personally, I'm trying to look at. Like, we have the immediate solution that we have to come up with for now. Yeah, tonight. Oh, right, tonight. <laughs> exactly. But I'm trying to take the bigger picture, too, and look down the road. Where does, how does all this look in five or ten years? Because inevitably, <coughs> bless you, um, bless you. conversations around, I hate to throw out that word, but regionalization have also come up again. And I've been trying to, like, <laughs> bless you, think about a lot of this, like, you know, if we if we decide to look at that from a cost savings, does that actually save anything? Regionalization. Right, because that I mean, you know, because inevitably that's going to come up again, and these are like you know things that we have to think about. Um, yeah. And it's it's just interesting because sure. I'm also really tired. I we'll figure out how to get through this now, but you know we also have to think about it. You know, the road we're headed down if we can't do that there's going to be repercussions that's a whole other thing but also like what after that you know that's the that's the thing and then you it, when you look at the two big chunks of expense so one of them the we'll call it the aberration that one i wouldn't expect to see going on but contractual obligations is a massive chunk and then we have the other one what was the other the other chunk was people off of the school choice okay and and that kind of stabilizes it and and at the very least another i mean there is not next year but the year after where we are there's some reasonable likelihood of needing enough one more teacher 
uh, um, because we'll have a, a one class class graduating, yep. one teacher class graduating, and we've been having to enough you know incoming to kindergarten have two teachers in the in the recent past. So right. um, that is also on the horizon. So because um, I'm just trying to look beyond the blinders, you know, and see like where this is going in the future too. Yep. You know, so, so have, have you, do you, do you have, I, I earlier we were, we were told that they're shifting a lot of costs off from school choice onto the budget. Do you have a policy that you guys live by for school choice? And, and I would say how, I, and, and, and David's point is well taken. I says, well, how do you know what's going to happen next year if you don't have a policy or you don't have an understanding how school choice is being used? So that's your revenue. So if you don't have an understanding of how the revenue is used, then how, how can you answer that question, David? You can't. Right, because you, and, you and just I, approach and would, it. And, okay. I, and I would say it is that, and again, going back a long time when we started using school choice, school choice, I thought, was supposed to be used for augmentation of programs strings art um, and and that so it, it, and if you and if you don't and if you don't have a policy and, and a policy that you're committed to how, how do you how do you how do you define what's what's needed so so you need you need a new teacher okay so a teacher approximately is to say fifty thousand dollars a year plus benefits that the school doesn't see, by the way. Mm -hmm. right. So so approximately fifty thousand dollars a year. So you know that you only have about eighty. You could have an increase of around eighty thousand dollars a year, and I'm just hypothetically to the to the school department, elementary school. Well, you could see if, if you if you understood how to think, you could say, okay, well we're going to, to we're going to. Um, um, absorb some of the hit the first couple years on school choice but we're basically and you're shifting it to the town budget over a period of time mm. you could do that but you don't if you don't have a policy if you don't have if you don't have a if you don't have a mission statement about how you're going to do it you're, to you're always going to have that problem so or the our, temptation our yeah. policy slash practice you know for years was to not use school choice for classroom teachers for core, core classroom teachers um, and uh, and again I think in some districts that have stronger support uh, um, you know from the tax base they you know they use it for you know upgrading their playgrounds and right. doing all kinds of things that we'd love to do that we were you know we're still putting off um, but um, you know, when we hit that year, when Scott, you talked about, uh, you know, it was what, 877 or whatever in chapter 70, and then the next year it was, I don't know, 30% less, 35%, 40% less. Um, that policy, uh, and, you know, went out the window. And, and our hope was that, um, you know, I mean, it was, you know, do you want to, Cut your arm off now, or wait and see if you're able to avoid doing that. And uh, that's what we've been doing. And uh, and I and I still like to avoid doing it. <laughs> so. So, um, like, what does what does the finance committee think? Uh, well, this is these are definitely the issue of of using the school choice. Absolutely has to be addressed. Or we have to be able to keep this manageable. The levels, especially when we're looking at the standard kind of increases of like needing a new teacher, being able, mm -hmm. the idea of pushing it off of the, off of the recurring budget is important. But the ability to do that now all at once, there's a big question mark because this. This idea, I mean, I, there is, I know some of the members of the committee have expressed, they've said that it's just going to have to go to the, the voters. It's tricky. It was, it was very difficult last year, and that was for less, and that was for the whole town. <coughs> so I, on, some, on some degree, it might be easier doing this if it's just for one department. 
if we're asking the town. It, it's a lot clearer, I think. But then, then again, it's not, because there's taxpayers who don't have kids in the school systems who want to argue, what, what do I need to pay for this anymore? You know, this, is, uh, this is not my. But I mean, if I'm meeting with my committee this week, so this is definitely something that we want to talk about more, and I'd like to have more input from the rest of them. Tom, to speak to your point, one of the, the whole reasons of moving even that last teacher salary off of school choice, and then I talked about two parts of it would be the, a large investment from the town, but then stewardship going forward. The whole point of moving it off was to not have regular classroom teachers off on school choice. That was, I don't know, and so you mentioned policy, I don't know how far we can go with it, but the intent bringing forward this budget was the idea that we're not going to fund regular recurring teacher salaries with school choice anymore. It was unsustainable in the past, and it's not something if we can get ourselves out of that we should not engage in in the future. I have a question, sort mm -hmm. of, too, and I'm just thinking because I know one of the, one of the, the challenges is staffing because it, it almost looks like a sine wave when you're looking at the population so you get a big bump in kindergarten and then that kind of waves through the school I'm guessing that one of the challenges is not you don't have as much flexibility on moving your staff around um, from one grade to another no, because I'm guessing that is part of the challenge because that occasionally rears its head, but I yep. mean, they're actually, a lot of the teachers are certified uh, through a number of grades and, and um, yep. But is yeah, that, that an easy, because that, I would think yeah. that you somehow be able to at least project out a rough staffing level yeah, and then have your motion within that, but I'm guessing That's, that that motion within that is still a challenge. I mean, from, and conversations I've had with Ben about that piece of it, you know, I mean, he manages that piece, obviously, that's not really particularly our purview, but, um, but it, I haven't heard that being problematic, that that, um, that, that piece actually, that they've had, it's worked out pretty well in terms of what teachers of grades they've been certified, what grades, you know, they're good at teaching and, and in his, you know, estimation or whatever, the combinations, you know, their experience and so on, and that that's, that hasn't been a challenge. The, the bigger one is just the, um, you know, the, uh, I mean, honestly, it's just that, that while much of Franklin County has seen the declining population and right. student po and of, you know, ours are going up school up. age kids, ours has come back up. So, um, you know, we're, we're at the same levels we were 11 years ago. Um, and uh, so, and, so, yeah, and, um, you know, to your point, Elliot, I mean, you know, honestly, we, this isn't even, this isn't moving, this isn't trying to actually resolve all of the school choice uh, in one year. Um, I mean, we're backing it off to, I thought it was 50,000 <laughs> balance. I, maybe, it's, maybe it's closer to 100. Um, we wouldn't, you know, we don't want to go any lower than 50 as a balance in, in, in a year. But you want um, to maintain a certain. So ideally, it would be more like the 100. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I think, yes, this is be, for a number of reasons. And again, the kick the can thing, sorry, I'm taking a long time here, but I'll wrap it up. The, the, that the kick in the can, using the choice to not ask for more, you know, come to the town, ask for more, potentially, you know, have to go back and sort it out later if, if we can't get it. Um, we've used the choice in the way we have. Um, and, um, but the, you know, the overall spend, you know, growth and spending of the school, so it's hitting in this one, in a big way in this one year, the overall growth and spending of the school over the last decade, um, you know, from FY09 to now, is comparable to, to most of the town departments. So, yeah, I mean, the school, that's, those are, and, and to the overall, where the town, overall town operating cost is gonna be. They've all grown 
Uh, and, and honestly, and, and like I said, it's right in, it's going to come in right around at what would be 2.5% growth per year. So cost of living growth per year. It's not some kind of crazy growth. And the school's going to be there, and the town as a whole is going to be there, and obviously the school drives a lot of that, but it's not like that the school's way up and the rest of the town's way below. It, on, together, they're all in or about at that, you know, 2.5% per year in that time period. So, I mean, you know, we're willing to go and to bat to try to get this righted for the <coughs> school and the town, but I, I don't think it's just been that the school um, has had an, uh, one spending trajectory relative to to the rest of the town. It's just hitting this way. Yes. <laughs> so the piece, the staffing piece that the school committee sees, yep. um, it's not so much the classroom teachers; it's the it's un the unpredictability of tutors, language tutors that we have to provide, and we have to provide them whenever the kids show up. They move in mid-year, we still have to provide them. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is about school choice. We have been trying to wean salaries off of that, and we have been doing that. The last ones that were on there got put on there during my time on the school committee, and what happened is we had a grant that the state took away. And, those are the, and it happened after the budget was set. It happened right in the beginning of the school year. And so that's where their salaries went. And I forgot everything else that I was saying. That, that's actually, if I, if I could, Mr. Chair, that's, that's actually analogous to a 9C cut for us. Yeah, right. It was like mid-year, mid -year sorry, you got to take 10% off. Yeah. OK, where the hell does that come from? Yeah. So interesting. The difference, I would say, Doug, in the trajectory, if you look at a decade's worth of expense growth, mm -hmm. uh, is that the shift for revenues, uh, f the ask for this year's shift to support those costs is, is dramatic as yeah. opposed to over a decade. Right. That's I all. Totally if, you know, if you look at the costing over, people are like, well, then why is it 350 grand this year? Well, it is because we're paying for, it was being paid for otherwise. And then, right. and then there's that other part of the story that we talked about, where the you know the declining contribution from the state. Yeah. So, that's so if just to give order of magnitude, if we use the shift from capital stabiliz from free cash to capital stabilization of 175,728, and we cut all other expense requests outside the elementary school, this isn't to vilify. It would still leave us uh, about 59,000 and change short. We'd have to use from some other source. That just gives you an order of magnitude to what it's like to ask, to what it's like to uh, be able to support 7% growth across the totality of the town. Right. That's just going zeros and then move reserves that are, other, that are formulaically set aside defer capital and then that becomes the new baseline for the coming year and it's important to bear in mind even if you did make a move with reserves in the current year to support a 7.1 percent increase in the operating budget that's and, and that's this is backing up before my prior statement here even if you did make that move to support a 7.1 percent operating budget there's no way the town in the following year can support it based on organic revenue growth. Right. You don't, you have, don't it. have that kind of growth. <laughs> right. Anyway, sorry. It's spreadsheet fun. <laughs> That's what they're calling it, huh? I no, it's not. <laughs> I think one of the most critical elements of this is going to be if this goes forward, if we are asking for an mm -hmm. right, we absolutely have to be really clear on explaining it well. Sure. It's a great because point. Because for the average yes. non-engaged voter who still votes but isn't engaged on much mm -hmm. of this, they're coming from this, coming to this looking at perspective of like, wait a minute, we voted for that last year. Right. What's going on? Great that point. That's correct. We have, to, we have to be able to explain this really great. well and explain how last year was. It was across town. General government budget. override. Yep. This is a very specific thing and there's some very, very specific drivers to it. So to, to be clear of the $354,000 ask, that $200,000 override in a normal trajectory, mint. We just skated through. Just a shameless plug for a year ago. 
But yeah, you're right. Communication is going to be absolutely critical. Right. Okay. How about this? So, could I ask the school, Mr. Chair, if I could ask the school committee uh, members? I understand there's a, a budget that was voted, and we know that leaving the last meeting, uh, that ask, as well as the town's uh, total budget being put forward, still has a couple of steps. Right? We may well come back to you before this week is over and say, can you put 100000 or what blank back in? Right? And we'll work towards some magic that's gone on in here. And when I say magic, there's not a lot of it. We have a certified free cash of 585760. We, you heard what the, the numbers were prior to that for the last five years. Stabilization, that's been the policy of the board by vote as well as codified in writing, we don't use that for a recurring expense. We just don't. So that that's that five hundred and sixty-three thousand is is off the table. We only have seven hundred seventy-four thousand dollars in capital stabilization, and fifty-one thousand dollars goes to her salary. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> FCAP. Um, and the treatment plant fee for service. It just is what it is. Water district for service they're not even in our budget we don't even vote it so they might have a million dollars but it's nothing that we vote um, that said overlay surplus is something that in years past uh, the assessors vote to raise a percentage for abatements this is getting a little too deep in the weeds about four years ago three or four years ago uh, they could no longer accumulate that more than two years so it's effectively zero there's, there's, you can't call up the assessors and go, hey, you've got a quarter of a million dollars you happen to be sitting on right now? That's ended. Although that happened 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. That used to be the way it was. It's not anymore. So with respect to the ask of the, of the committee, right, Mr. Chair? The ask of the committee, you know, we have some homework ourselves to do, and we have to notify the town clerk if we're going to keep it in the general election by a week from today about what if there's going to be a ballot question and what that magnitude would be. So are, and part, if you're asking, are we capable of getting together as a committee if we need to? Uh, yes, I think we are. <laughs> yeah, I figure you probably would be. That doesn't have to necessarily be by Monday, but I think the other, again, Mr. Chair, the reality is if we go for an, if the board puts on a ballot and it fails, your value becomes zero, right? It doesn't mean zero dollars. It becomes your ask is not your ask anymore. It's not funded. Then what happens? Well, it's a terrible thing to look at. It's the you shall not pass Gandalf quote, right? <laughs> I was, I was, that was going to be my yeah, next exactly. question. Is what's the, because in my business, you have to have a plan B. Right. And There's a reason plan A doesn't work. Is, 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 is red. A, exactly right. <laughs> and I, and and that's probably something that should it's be not. in the communication of this too is here's plan A, this is what plan B looks like. And for those of us who've gone through plan B before, it may end up costing more. Well, part of this is the, is the leftover results of plan B. Yeah. Well, you're right. It's it's a noise. It's a ripple mm -hmm. of Plan B from yeah. Right. Completely, you get it. But the but the but to me the biggest is how how do you know how do you know that? And, and I would say there was a question asked at the school committee. Well, I thought we had a two and a half override last year, and I thought and and if you look at the town departments, we are within our the, all except for one department is something that we can live with. We, we are spending within our means. Now, now the question has to be, and, and I'm sorry it's an uncomfortable question, is what's going to change in that department that's going to say that we're going to have forecasts, revenue forecasts, that are going to step up and be accurate. That, in, 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 in some, in, for, for instance, when I, when I go, go had a couple of seconds, I went through the thing and, and it talked about two and a half percent increase over since 2009. Well, and, and again, when you look at the elementary budget over the last 
four or five years, the, the increases have been have been pretty pretty significant. When you look between 15 and 16, at around a 50, 52,000, 52, then 16 to 17, there's a $219,000 difference. When you look between 17 and 18, there's a 110,000 difference. When you look between nine, 18 and 19, you look at a $99,215 difference. And then this year's a 353, 353, well, 354, 14 difference. I mean, so when when do we gain control of that budget? When is that budget going? It's one of those years when we had to do the, um, yeah, yeah, the net, we were, the state came in, so we had to, the net schools, we weren't even meeting the net school spending. I mean, for part of that, it does sound like we've been trying hard to stay at that 100,000 for a bunch of those years. I and, and we've been trying in my time to get to move that school choice money, that, that variable revenue off. But I, I feel like we've just, we've been doing it five and ten thousand dollars at a time. And when you have like a three hundred fifty thousand dollar base that you're looking at you want to wrestle with five thousand, it, it doesn't work that way. That's why I just for a few years I'm, I'm, I'm I've been waiting for this to happen. It's unsustainable mm -hmm. what we've been doing in the past. And, and the, the reason I use that 2009 as you know, I mean, that was that was um, when I think uh, again a lot of after that a lot of uh, across you know the school took a big hit in that year, but all, all town departments got hit that year and, and some sub, sub, subsequent years, and have been kind of you know gradually recovering over that time period. Um, and this, you know, the school in that time period did have this other source of funding, school choice, um, that was used in this way to, to, you know, to stem the tide. Um, and and that is that is a big that's the difference, and that's what's being reflected in this big sure. shift this year. That that, you know, that's at the end. Mm -hmm. That's done. Um, and and you know there is no more kick in the can and and I think again last year you know that amount you know for various reasons wasn't well it's enough. important it's important to bear in mind the superintendent I think correct me if I'm wrong made it a point to say that the elementary school costs this year aren't necessarily the issue it's the loss of revenue on two streams one was a, a miscount over a two-year period and the other was two students anyway the yeah. loss of loss of revenue stream yeah. Yeah. leaving the building yeah right so those those two things aren't necessarily reflected in in cost structure it's the revenue that you're needing for the elementary schools function Yeah, and again, the 2010-2009 argument can be made at the town clerk's office or the library. You know, if we didn't have trash, that'd have been 50-50. <laughs> By the way, we don't have trash. I know. So, um, other than coming back, have, if, if I could, Mr. Chair, I would ask that we uh, ask Sherry to look at reducing the current ask on the town side $175,000 and then ask the town elementary school to come back and ask for a $100,000 reduction of their request and see if we can keep it inside the cap or tonight we vote to before Monday we vote to put an override value on the budget there's no other there's what, what time Monday do we have to have the vote at a normal time our normal meeting Clerk said by Monday because the date falls on Sunday. I think we have to clarify that. Well, if we need to schedule another one, we can. This week, Tuesday and Wednesday are tied up already. It would just be a one purpose meeting, right? Yeah, single agenda item. But again, with homework. Mm -hmm. Just get the red pen out. Oh, yes. 
After the meeting is fine, she said. After the meeting? Okay, great. <laughs> okay, Thank so you, Town Clerk. Monday. So, Monday normal time. Thank you, Wendy. And you want to, you want to, you want to, you want to reduce the rest of the town by 175,000. To make, to make no, it work? knowing that you're not going to get any support from Frontier, you're not going to reduce their budget. Correct. And you know you're not going to reduce Franklin Tech. Correct. So insurance, we could, wages. We, so we could cut the highway department off and say three hundred thousand dollars. All right, so cut the highway department. Police, highway, fire, library, administration. I'm not willing to make those cut. Okay. I don't think there's 175,000 from our side that we can decrease. I, matter of fact, I know there's not. I do too. Not without changing the way we currently operate. Right. I mean, as as it is now, this uh, Sunderland Town Hall is the only town hall that operates on a four-day four work week. Mm -hmm. Still an aftermath of food, 09, so we really haven't got back to everything that we'd lost back then. Although, I, I'm not saying it's not uneven across. I'm just saying it, it, there's some. Sure. But. It, we're around that same well again curve up and down the, the, across the town if you if you if you look at the the total budget of 572 increase 572 788 and you remove the you know some value that's the delta of the 354 you can you can stay within our, we can stay within the yes. revenues 218.61 so somehow, two hundred eighteen thousand dollars has got to come out somewhere. Collectively. When I was typing and writing, you know, you get. Basically, the shift of the shift of uh, the formulaic <coughs> shift to capital stabilization, which is detrimental in the long run, the removal of uh, our so health insurance increase, the removal of a full-time officer request, uh, the, the wages of departments at specifically at two percent. So we're still fifty-three thousand dollars short. That actually reminds me too. That technically. There's that other piece of the elementary school budget that isn't even really reflected in there ever, which is the not in their ask. No, the, but no. Is the, the I, cost of the seventy thousand dollars in insurance or I just put on the table was partly driven by their employment, right? By that employment pool, not their employment. And that's that technically pool. part of the cost of running the school, but it's not reflected in the school's right. budget right. ever. That's just as an FYI, you know, for. Peter picked Everybody up on knows. that last time. It's yeah. like when he talked about percentages, like, and I'm pretty sure you'd paid the indirects. Yes, absolutely, the town does pay the indirects. Yeah. Right. Because I was data crunching once on some budget stuff, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to remember to account for that because technically, if you're really trying to get your hands around what's the really the total mm -hmm. cost of education, you know, let's say at the elementary level, you have to factor that in too. Health insurance is four hundred thirteen thousand five seventeen, with the largest pool being at the elementary school. Yeah, because there's a dozen people or so here. Yeah. Again, there's, yeah. Anyway, it's it's again, there's no no villains, no rescuers, no persecutors. It's yeah, not it's just not, not what we're trying to do. So uh, after school, Scott, I just look at if you go backward from schools down, you don't. I, I don't think there's anything you touch in there. On right? the on the big spreadsheet. So you go you go yeah. from line item one one eighty eight down. Yep. There's nothing you're gonna cut from there. No, yeah. those are all well, benefits and insurance. Right. Miscellaneous and reserve is a whopping increase of right. so in, in senior so center at five thousand dollars. If you go back if you go from waste treatment item one to yep. Yep. Uh, item one eighty eight two, you probably have 
including a $45,000 officer, you probably have $120,000 of new growth. And, and I, that's just, yeah. I'm just yeah. averaging. Yep, yep, yep. Of requests, exactly right. So you're, you're talking about cutting, you're looking at uh, $150,000 cuts in, in out of town services. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, the alternative is we bring forward a ballot question and we ask what the ballot question size is going to be. Scott, I'll tell you what, I have no desire to bring forth a ballot question. I, I, prom I sat in this chair last year and promised the town that we were taking care of our, our problem. So until someone's coming up to me and tell, telling the, this board that, that there's a serious problem because they, of, of whatever the reason is, mm -hmm. And this is how we're going to fix it, and this is going to how it's going to go forward. I have no desire to go sure. uh, an override question. And, and some, you got somebody going to tell me why that's not good management. Good point. Just to give us money, just give us money, and we're not going to tell you why, how, how it happened, where it happened, and how we're going to correct it. Mm -hmm. That's not good management. So are you? Are you? So that's not good management, you, Doug. No, I'm saying, are you suggesting that you haven't heard how it's happened and why it's happened? I, I, I'm not the only one to pay taxes in this town. I'm not the only one that pays taxes. I didn't say you were. I'm, I'm just, I, right. honestly, I'm trying I, to I, I, I sat in front of this. I sat in front of, sat in front of this. That you have, I sat in this, this, I this chair answer. last okay. year and said we were going to have an override and that we're going to try to take care of our problems so it wasn't going to happen. Now it's going to, going to have a, not, not only going to have another override, it's two times what we had last year. It'll be big. And, 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 and most of the line items in here are stagnant. Who's going to, who's going to talk to the town? And tell tell them why. Yeah, fair. And and how how it's not going to happen again. Who's going to instill that confidence in them? I can't because I told them last year. Now the, I I wouldn't listen to me. Fair. Yes. I don't know that you could expect everyone to be perfect all the time. It seems like we've had an explanation of why we're here. I think we all knew, anyone who was paying attention to the school budget over the last 10 years knows that this was the school choice problem was creeping up. So I get that we're all angry, but we need to look at where we are and what we can do. It's, I mean, I understand being angry, but you need to look at the whole issue and think, like, how are we going to constructively work together on this? Sure. I, I think one of the things, too, is that we need to be clear about because I don't think the school choice is the sole reason for the budget increase. So we have to be honest about that because what is the biggest chunk of costs? It's labor. You know what I mean? So we need to be we need to be honest about where the increases are too. It's not just school choice. The, the biggest cost is human labor. And without a judgment, it's just a simple fact that that's your biggest expense is people. Right. But, it, but again, if we look at over the sweep of time, what we were paying to, you know, for, this, for the school, uh, you know, including those labor costs, which, which you said are the main driver, uh, and when we were at a school size 10 years ago, and what we're asking to pay today, it's 2.5% increase a year. It's inflation. It's not. So. Uh, well, it's, well, overall, it's more than 25 because we've had to go for overrides. And, and, no, no, and, and, no, and I'm, I, I'm saying the budget, the, yeah, the, the, I mean, the, the, the budget that we're asking for is, 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 is it's slightly less than if you project it out at two and a half percent a year. From and when you, you can see that this room is an exercise in the bigger picture for trying to, what you're seeing here, magnify this by a thousand when you're trying to take the message outside of this room. We've been through this before. We know what the challenge is like. Um, and and, and I, conceptually, I, I have an issue with you can't expect 
expenses to ever I, I have an issue with the way proposition two and a half has become viewed because it, it was never intended to say that you can never spend more than this amount it was to put controls in and have a voice in there about when you need to go above that and periodically that's going to happen but we also have to look at the it has to be considered in all of this that basically what, what Tom was saying, you know, because you do this again, and let's say the cost goes up again, how are you going to explain that, and how are you going to support it? If you add three hundred and fifty-four thousand dollars, just things to consider. Five hundred and seventy-two, which is currently the to the the global ask. If you add five hundred and seventy-two thousand, we don't have the two and a half next year to support that as the new zero you just don't that's just math not without dipping into reserves or having a zero growth and, and make <laughs> I applaud I applaud both administrations uh, both at the tech school as well as at Frontier it is a very rare occasion we get a reduction in both high school districts Coincidentally, with this ask at the elementary school, not that I'm a conspiracy guy, to next year four kids go to Franklin Tech, boom, two hundred thousand dollars, and you have no choice; you pay it. You think it was coincidental this year we got a seventy-one thousand dollar reduction from Frontier? Come on, you guys got the same set of books. I, I know you're watching, Darius. I mean, look, Frontier is not driven by no, I told, Sunderland. No, no, no. On the contrary. No, I just, I just, it's yeah. a strange coincidence that both regional school districts, we get relief in one year. Next year, it could be our EQV year. Next year, it could be, well, it goes on, you know, right? Spin the wheel of destiny. Right. What do you get? So, and, and also, I hope our new representative is watching this because there's the other piece here that, unfortunately, we're all stuck dealing with the repercussions of this but a big chunk of this is the state contribution and the formula and I hope that our new representative is paying attention to everything that's going on here as she's trying to work out on some of those things because that I don't know I don't remember who but somebody in the audience mentioned that maybe that's something was it you Elliot about um, that was something that we should be pushing on the state for and it is because There's that's a, another member of the school committee of, went to last Friday's hearings. Yeah. So hopefully that I get continue to advocate for it. So what do you think? Send them, we have homework. They have homework. Yeah. Yeah. Just 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 to in response to your yeah comment a short time ago. Um, unfortunately, the the one thing where you, when you've been involved for the last period of time you remember what happens in 2009 when when we had to make um, you you know um, what what happens when you don't have music when you don't have art when you don't have and, and again and I'll set and I said it I'll set it back then I'll say it again I went I went to this elementary school this was this was my fourth grade class okay guess what when I was in fourth grade how things have changed or, or they haven't changed we had um, band we had ba we had band and we we mr. Kopeck we marched over to the library that now our historical center and we had band practice and and over there and we had concerts and and we 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 had we had a uh, um, a library with Mrs. Sheeting, uh, with our librarian over there. We we, we had uh, a woman that came in that had handwriting. We had a handwriting specialist that that taught us how. And boy, I got ones in penmanship uh, until <laughs> you still I did do. my until yeah. I had my math homework and then I was went to four. So don't ask me how that happened. Uh, we we had uh, Mrs. Montague had voice. We had voice. We all sang, even though I couldn't sing. And she said, "Tom, just make sure you look like you're singing, but please don't sing." Um, so we had all of that. Um, but guess what? Guess what's the first that leaves our, our elementary school or our schools if we don't if we don't fund? Those are the things that we have. And and what happens? And what happens when we lose those things? I know what happens. We lose school choice, and and people said, "Oh, you're just you're making that up." No, 
we we have data we show what the school choice uh, losses are yeah, um, because the kids no longer come to Sundown Elementary School. They go to other schools that do have it. And, and, and instead of dropping your kids off in Sunwin, you drop them off in Whiteley or Conway or Deerfield or Amherst or, or pick a town. Okay? So we know what happens. Okay? So then we lose that we lose that $5,000 per student. And, oh, Tom saying you're making children into dollar signs. Absolutely, yeah. Children are dollar signs. And as we lose kids to school choice, if they don't get a school choice, guess what? They go to charter schools, and charter schools are even worse for the town when it comes to look at the monetary effect that it has, has on the budget. So I understand what happens. I, I do believe that if you want to make a chain, that, it, that it's important that you have to stand up, you have to, you have to t say what, what needs to be said, Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's, it's difficult. You have to say what you have to say to make things, and, and you have to let people know why things are happening. That's all I'm trying to say. Unfortunately, I know what happened. We were fortunate last time that we had people that donated a lot of money, some were from outside the district. We had companies, trash companies, believe it or not, trash companies that came forward and started giving yep. free uh, trash pickup to the schools and to the town halls. Okay, um, and we had very engaged people that went out and did stuff, and 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 they not only did stuff but they donated their time. They they were in the classrooms. They 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 volunteered in the classroom. They did all all kinds of numbers of things. So uh, unfortunately, I know what happens. I, I, I'm not. I I don't look forward to. Ha I don't want it to happen. But I also know if you have a three hundred fifty four thousand dollar three hundred fifty four fourteen. It's we we can't we can't devastate the rest of our our town. We we can't you know we're going to have the town clerk work three days a week instead of the four days a week. We're going to have have our town the town administrator has gotten probably over three million dollars grants and grants over three million. I and I I've asked her a million times. She won't do it. Which I, I'm going to I'm going to knock her evaluation this year severely because she won't do it. But she does it because she Have doesn't want to meeting. let us know what kind of work she, she's doing. And but she's 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 gone out and got us over three million dollars worth of, of of grants easily that we haven't got, got before. But you know what? Then we'll, we'll have to cut that position. So we'll make it a part time position. So our, our we'll, uh, so we'll go from we'll go to, from a full time professional position to a part time part-time person that we won't get a hundred thousand dollars worth of grants we wouldn't get grants if they they came and beat us over the head with them never mind all the other things that happen when you don't have effective uh day-to-day -day management of facilities so yeah i know i i just think that um <clears throat> i talked enough and right now so where you want to go mr bergeron i think we have two pieces of homework and we need to schedule another meeting later this week okay the first is what, are, what do our budget reductions look like and what are, what's our ask of the elementary school? Okay. That sets us up for an informed decision on Monday. All right. That's fine. Um, Sherry, can you uh, review the budget and get it to us by yeah. Friday so we can review first pass? Yeah. Elliot, you probably want to do the same. Yeah. You and the finance committee, whatever you guys and school committee, you need to do what you got to do. Give, you to give marching orders to the uh, superintendent as well. And we'll have a correspondence at the same time that develop this budget is globally developed, saying, you know, here's an ask. As we said at the school committee meeting before, you know, there's two there's two paths. We can get a, we can get to an override value, uh, and then we have our own homework to do, and then we'll we'll have an ask as well. I mean, yeah, and some of that, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're not voted by the school committee, but, you know, I mean, those scenarios were laid out Agreed. previously. Yep. Um, you know, and they all involve cuts. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Very so, Douglas. I had, a, I had a correspondence yeah. during our discussion about, you know, the predicating this back in 2010, and the reality is, Last year, between 18 and 19, we had, there was a $498,000 increase in the operating budget, total assessed operating budget. And then this year, with an ask of 572,000, you're talking, you know, basically a million dollars in two years for the town of Sunderland. So keep, keep that in mind. 
So again, 17 to, I'm sorry, 18 to 19 was 498,970. <coughs> that was a big nut. This at 572 is a larger nut. Subsequent years. Yeah. So, I, and you get it. Okay. We get it. And, yep. I, and again, it's, it's, it's been kicked down the road. And uh, I mean, either we're, either we, address it by being able to bring in more revenue or yep. we address it by cutting services in the town bingo that's all right great. Great. thank you guys thanks so much all right mr anything else there's two items on the agenda yeah i was just i was oh, seeing if there's anything from the from the uh, audience Scotty. okay sorry. all right approval change order one sunderland riverside park project sherry uh, this is for alternate one and two uh, for the gravel um, dr um, parking area to pave parking, the additional parking spaces, and for the electrical to bury the wire. Okay, and part of the cost is being paid for by uh, DCR? Correct. The rest and, is and great. The rather within the grant, the funding of the grant, so outlay would be zero to the town. Zero to the town. Okay. So, Any uh, questions, Scott or Dave? No. Okay. Move, move to accept the change order as presented. Second. Motion made and second to accept change order number one. Ooh, that's a nice number. Let's hope there's not a two. Yeah. Let's hope there's not a two. <laughs> all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All right, Cherry, we are all set with that. Uh, FY20 additional tax levy capital stabilization. Uh, Ms. Uh, move to assess an additional 113,141 in, in uh, real estate and personal property taxes. This is for the purpose of funding the capital stabilization plan. FY20. Motion? Second. We have a motion made. Do we have a second? He did. Oh, yeah. Second. I second it. Sorry. Second. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thanks, Doug. Okay. Thanks. Night, Doug. Uh, anything else? Schedule another meeting this week. Schedule when you want the meeting. I am. Tied up tomorrow and Wednesday. Tomorrow's capital planning and Wednesday. You want a Thursday meeting then? Uh, I get. I have a labor negotiation. Huh? I have a labor negotiation meeting Thursday. Thursday. Do you want a what meet? time? Uh, it starts at four thirty. Oh, we'll be, yeah, yeah we'll you know, if we one, keep one it at six thirty. No, well, it's strategy only. So maybe if we stick with six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty on Thursday. Six thirty, please. And uh, at that agenda, can you uh, include the warrant? Include the warrant so we can go th and uh, throw the a bunch of things that we can put on really quick. Okay. 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 Yep. All right. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Move to adjourn. We have a motion. To second. Adjourn. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero. Declare us out at eight.